All right, let's go ahead and get started on chapter three, cells and tissues. So we know cells are the smallest functional unit in the body, and there's trillions of cells in the body. So each cell turns over at least once every seven years. Some take a little bit longer. Some are a little bit faster. We know our skin kind of sloughs off at a faster rate than, say, our um, liver cells or something like that. So, but at least once every seven years, you will have a, a region, as my daughter says, of new cells. So in the cell itself, we have what's called cytoplasm, organelles, and all kinds of good stuff that's going to help the cell function. And it makes the cell perform a certain task based upon homeostasis and the um, demand upon that cell. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So organization of cystic or cytoplasm forms substance important for life. The wall is the plasma membrane is selectively permeable, which that means it controls what crosses over the border. So it does this by phospholipids and cholesterol inside of the layered wall of the cell. All right, so I did underline that. So make sure you know the plasma membrane is made up of phospholipids and cholesterol. So organelles are considered little organs inside of the cell itself. So the first one we want to talk about is the ribosomes. This is the protein factory of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum, ER, we have two different types. We have the rough and the smooth. So Consider, an, reticulum means net like, so a network of connecting sacs and canals. So the rough ER transports proteins, smoothies are synthesized chemicals. And then a Golgi apparatus. So this one is a chemical processing and packaging center. So mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. That's where all the cell energy comes from. All right, next one is lysosomes. So this is what's going to break down any foreign substance or any bad toxins or antigens that would come into the cell. It's broken down from our lysosomes. The next one, centrioles. This is, this is how your cell um, reproduces. So reproduction, cell reproduction, centrioles. So you all might need to make like flashcards over these organelles or kind of figure out Maybe go on Quizlet and create a set of matching for these. Somebody's probably already created them. If you just type in organelles, cell organelles, and I'm sure it, they probably pop up. But all right, the last two, and then we'll look at these in the diagram. Cilia, this is hair-like extensions that allow the cell to move. And then the flagella is only found on a sperm cell. So it allows it to propel itself or swim. So anytime you see a flagella, you have to know it's a sperm cell you're looking at. Cilia could be quite a few different types of cells. All right. Let's kind of look at these. Centrioles. We talked about how that's the cell reproduction. See how they're kind of crossed. Then we got the Golgi apparatus, a 
chemical processing and packaging. We have the lysosomes, which are the breakdown of microbes. The ER, which allow the proteins to pass back and forth. And other chemicals, we have mitochondria. They have it listed here. So this is the mitochondria cell. The cilia is here, it's down here. So it's going to allow the cell to, to move in a wave-like fashion. And then the flagella, which is coming off the back side of the cell. There's 23 chromosomes. And remember, the, the female has XX and the male has XY. So it depends on if that Y connects with one of the female's Xs. It's going to create the male. If an X from the guy connects with the X from the girl, it's going to be a female. So really, and y'all probably heard that the male determines the sex of the child. That's that's true. Yeah. Only because uh, because of that Y chromosome. Other than that, we know if you give it to the women; they'll do it right. You know, we'll just let them handle it, take care of it. They're they're gonna figure it out. You know, faster than we will. So. But yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disagreeing, <laughs> but yep, it's the, it's the Y chromosome. So we get 23 from either the X or the Y for the male, 23 from the X or the female. When those get together, that creates the 46 and that's the DNA. That's how many chromosomes are in DNA. So we'll talk about the genetic code here in a second. All right, so how do, like, what's the big deal about understanding all of these organelles and how does it display in our body? So the relationship of the cell structure and function is, think of it this way. If we had your heart tissue that was damaged, which organelle do you think you would have more or higher concentration of? So, for example, I'll give you two, mitochondria or, say, ribosomes. Which one of those do you think you could have more organelles of in the cardiac tissue? So it would demand more mitochondria. So say our skeletal muscle, which is not always moving, we know we can rest our arm or our legs or whatever, and it's not requiring so much mitochondria, but maybe more of the ribosomes because it's getting damaged deeper, more muscle fibers are being damaged. So we're going to have a higher concentration of ribosomes than we would mitochondria. You kind of seeing that? Yeah, that makes sense. So what about our lymphatic system? What um, organelle do you think would be high in our lymphatic system? So we would see a little bit more lysosomes there than, say, a muscle tissue. So based upon the tissue's demands, our body is going to create more organelles specifically for that tissue. So that's how the cell structure and function kind of go together. So let's talk about substance as in passive transport processes and active transport process. The difference between the two is a passive transport process does not require added energy. We were passive range of motion, active range of motion to where an active range of motion requires energy. I always think active energy, ATP, that's energy in our body to where passive don't. So here you're going to want to know that passive transport process examples are diffusion, 
osmosis, dialysis, filtration. Those are all examples of passive transport processes. So if we make it to where this membrane doesn't let large particles through, now we're going to have to, uh, if we want to get those across the membrane, we're going to have to put energy into it to force them through the membrane. Now we just created active transport process. We have to have some type of pump, so force of energy to push that through. In our body, those are known as ion pumps. Ions are like calcium. Um, there's, there's some examples right there, sodium, potassium. So those are ions, and our body works to move those in and out of the cell, but those are so large that it requires energy to do that. So think of maybe a door when it's shut. You have to go over and turn the doorknob to let somebody in. You're acting as an active transport process. To let them in, you had to put energy into that doorknob to turn it to allow them to come in. Otherwise, they can't get through that door. So that's what our body does. It kind of inside the cell, the energy, the ATP will go to the doorknob, turn it, and allow those ions to come in. Whatever it, it feels like it, it needs to be at equilibrium at the time. All right, so two big terms that you guys will hear again are phagocytosis and pinocytosis or pinocytosis. I've heard it pronounced two different ways, so whichever way it's going to make sense for you, that's the best way to learn it. So the difference is for these two terms, if it's a solid being broken down versus fluid being broken down. So phagocytosis is going to be more of the solid, where the pinocytosis is going to be more of the uh, liquids or fluid that's being dissolved. I've heard people memorize this as they'll call it like pinocytosis, and they'll think of like, or pinocytosis, they'll say pina colada, drinking liquid, pinocytosis. So, I don't know if that works for you. Take it, run with it. But if you got something else, you know, just, just make sure because you will see those two terms used again. Seven, so. Cell replication. So, we know DNA is how we're created as individuals. These are proteins or amino acids in the body that structurally create us as individuals. And how these base pairs, and what I call base pairs is your A and T, and we see the name of these here, adenine, thymine, and guanine, I never say that right, and cytosine, guanine. Those always go together. So A goes with T and G goes with C unless you're talking RNA and you'll see a G with a U. So I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. But it's only, DNA is only composed of those four amino acids. Acids A and T and G and C. So let's say the, if that's the only base pairs that we have, A and T and a G and C, it is really the sequence of these base pairs that creates us as individual people because you don't have any other amino acids in your body that create your DNA. It's A, or a and T, G and C. That's it. So you may have A, T, A, T, A, T, G, C. I may have A, T, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C. And there's millions of these base pairs or sequence together that creates us as individual people. 
So do y'all remember back when they like cracked the genome and it was like a huge ordeal that they could actually see the sequence of these base pairs? Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty big deal back then. Uh, gosh, that's been, I want to say a hot minute. Uh, early 90s maybe? I'm going to have to look back on some trivia on that, but the big deal was that they finally figured out the sequence to these, say, in A and T and G and C. So really how they're put together, the organization of those amino acids create or make us all different. So genome genetic information stored in base pairs of the sequence. That's why I was saying that's how we're all different. So RNA is really a replica of our DNA. So DNA is in the nucleus. We know that's where the 40, 46 chromosomes are. So what if we were to damage our DNA? What process would we go through to restore that because if our cells keep replicating over and over again like they do and if we change the sequence of those base pairs long term it would definitely change the outcome of that type of tissue in in the long run you yeah, heard like garbage in garbage out you are what you eat or you know, all that stuff. I mean, it's true because if we don't have something that's allowing our DNA to replicate itself properly, then over time, it's it's going to change. So, and that's, that's what can happen. So, this these processes are called transcription and translation. So, let's look at this slide right here. So, first, we need to figure out where the transcription and translation, the replication takes place. Is it inside the cell or outside the cell? So transcription happens inside the cell. Translation is outside the nucleus. So inside the nucleus or outside the nucleus. All right, so DNA, A or G, right? And then the other side is either gonna be the T or the C. So we damaged it, this area. So what our body does, it sends in a way to transcribe what's already there. So if we're missing the T and G side of it, then we can tell that it's missing based upon what's on the other side because we have an A and a C. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Without a board, it's kind of hard to write it out and show you but we can mold take a mold of what's there still left and then we can send that through the protein factories to the ribosomes to make new amino acids to create the uh, DNA again so this messenger RNA is what's going to be headed to the protein factories here and it's going to mix with the ribosomes to create new amino acids that's going to go back in, a, in its place. All right, so this is big right now, the mRNA, because where have y'all heard people talk about mRNA yet? The COVID-19 vaccine, that's what it's created of the mRNA messenger. So your body is trying to replicate. So, so your body thinks it's the COVID-19 antigen. Then it builds up antibodies to attack that antigen. So on and it's, it's pretty crazy because this 
COVID vaccine is the first mRNA vaccine licensed vaccine out there. There's no other mRNA vaccine that's that's licensed to be used for commercial use. This is the very first one. But people think of it as like, I don't want to take it. It's making people grow third arms and stuff like that. Well, technically, it it really can't because all it is is a copy of the COVID vac- or virus. And then your body's responding to, it's putting the whole picture together saying, oh, well, if I put the rest of that story together, it's going to look like this. That's what we're going to make antigen to. So it's like a fraction. It's like a, a puzzle piece. And when it goes into your body, your body is already creating the whole puzzle out of that one little piece. So that's that's how the mRNA works. So it's, it's, it's crazy that we can take such a little fragment of a virus, copy of a virus, send that into the body, and we get a immune response from it. So, it, I mean, it doesn't affect your DNA or nothing like that because it's, it's not going to attach to DNA because it's not, your body is not damaged the DNA for it to connect with. So those ribosomes are now coming into play when you have the mRNA, the messenger um, DNA you're trying to make new. So it's got to have that protein factory to make new DNA to go back to this to restore that section of the body. Uh, if I have it underlined, make sure you're paying attention to it or you're jotting it down. Transcriptions, the DNA and mRNA. And the mRNA is a messenger RNA. So Val sends a protein. Um, I think I've talked about all that. All right, we good for the next one? Yeah. Okay. So the um, subdivision mitosis process, we're not going to cover meiosis, this mitosis. When a cell divides we want to make sure it divides evenly so we got to be able to identify some of these stages of cell division so that whole process like i said is called mitosis let's look at each one of those phases and kind of pull out keywords that's going to help us to identify a particular stage all right period when the cell is not actively dividing is called interphase so interphase is basically the starting point. All right. And there's all kinds of little videos. I know if I play this for you, it's probably going to push us over the seven o'clock because we need to talk about tissue still. So, and I think y'all are almost tapped out for uh, an hour of DNA and cell replication. So prophase chromosomes, they start to appear. All right, the next one, the second phase, spindle fibers attach themselves to each chromatin, and then the chromosomes start to align in the middle. So middle metaphase. So like I said, if anything, you're jotting down what I have underlined up here, or taking a picture of it as I go through it on the slide, however you're, you're getting it. I go too fast, just let me know. All right, anaphase, they start to pull apart. So chromosomes are pulled to opposite ends of the cells. And I'm going to show you a picture of all this here in a second. Cleavage furrow develops at the end of this phase because we're almost at the telophase to where it actually breaks apart.
telophase is where they separate evenly. So now go tell someone you have two daughter cells. It could be two son cells. I don't know. It just daughter cells. I guess having a daughter just came to me, daughter cells. But all right. So a picture of all these phases together would look like this. So interface, before we get started, spindle fibers start to appear, appear. This is your prophase. And now the metaphase, they start to line down the middle, the spindle fibers, the chromatins. Anaphase, cleavage furrow, it's starting to pull those apart. Because if you look at a chromosome, it looks like an X. So all they're doing is splitting that X so you have an equal halves on each side. And to know that the body does this naturally without, you know, it's, it's crazy just to, to think that this process happens without any interference or, you know what I'm saying, it's like natural process. And this happens how many times in the body? A ton. Yeah. yeah. So... That's your, that's your phases of mitosis. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. All right, good there. We still got seven minutes. All right. So changes of growth, sizes, okay. Hypertrophy, increase in size of the tissue atrophy is the decrease in size of the tissue it's a hyper increase and then a means absent or decreased terminology there hyperplasia is the increase the number of cells which that cannot happen in humans let's see uh anaplasia the abnormal and then uncontrollable cell reproduction. Those two phases or those two um, replication or changes take place a lot in our white blood cells and they can create a lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, the difference in lymphoma for the white blood cells if they develop at an abnormal rate. So that's what leukemia is. You're an abnormal development or size of your white blood cells all right tissues six minutes we can do it all right connective tissues these are four different types connective muscle nerve or epithelial all right that's what the body is broken down to as far as tissues these are all connective tissue so areolar adipose Blood being a connective tissue, that one's always interesting because we don't think of blood as being connective tissue. Bones, cartilage, fibrous, um, hemopoiesis or hemopoietic. That's like development of red blood cells or so the red blood cells connection there. Have y'all heard like sharks are full of cartilage, like there's no bones in sharks? Yeah, I've heard that. We talked about that in class, didn't we? I don't know. I think I've just I've heard it in passing, like they don't have bones at all. And then Leslie ruined it, believe it or not, because she said, Well, don't they have teeth? I'm like, Oh my gosh, they do. And that is bone. Yeah, so she is right. Like something Leslie would say. <laughs> yeah, so uh that's not true. Sharks do have bones. They do have teeth, so don't let somebody fool you on that one. Thank you, Leslie. All right, moving on. Epithelial tissue. This is mostly seen in or classified by its shape and arrangement. So let me just flip it here. So squamous cell is a flat cell. Cuboid looks like a cube. Columnar looks like a column. Pretty simple so far, right? So if it's a simple squamous cell, it's going to simple means one layer. Simple cuboid, simple columnar, one layer. 
All right. So stratified means more than one layer. So we have a bunch of squamous cells together. Transition. So we could have stratified cuboid, stratified columnar. So either more than one layer, stratified, one layer, simple. Transitional means it goes from one cell type to the other. Not, not too bad. All right, and this one is pseudo stratified. It's like this one's going to be uh, columnar, pseudo stratified columnar cells. Pseudo means not true. So if we really look at it, this one is simple because it only has one layer. However, here's two layers. Here's two layers. Oh, there's one layer. So it's not really simple. It's not really stratified. It's pseudo stratified. So we put the word not true up there. So just name this for the shape of the cell and how many's in there. All right, so we'll see a lot of these around our digestive system, our respiratory system. Uh, different areas of the body is going to have different types of cells because it's either for absorption, secretion, protection, um, so you could probably imagine which one of those offers the more protection, say, for the sun on the skin. It would be more like the, the stratified squamous. So more the, the stratified layers would help protect us against the skin. So that's where we're going to see more of those, those tissues at. So this, again, relates to the cellular, the structural, uh, and the function of the the body. So here's one of the, these are goblet cells. On, oh yeah, there it is, goblet. So these are our mucus producing cells. So these are in our respiratory system. So imagine oxygen seeping down through each one of those columns. So what that's going to do is increase the surface absorption area. So the more area that we can get in between these columns, the more we're going to be able to absorb other than just the top part of the surface, which is very little. So hopefully that kind of that makes sense. We can absorb throughout the cell walls up and down and not just on the cell surface on the top. We'll see some of those in our stomach. So y'all can kind of flip through there and and look at the difference. I know there's a ton of these. All right, again, connective tissue. What's this kind of look like to y'all? Yeah, it looks like a tree to me, and you're correct. It is bone, a bone cell. So a lot of people look at it and they're like, that looks like a cut tree. So it's, it does. And that's, that is a bone cell in the middle. So good deal. I think it's the first time, like we've gotten it right per class. So that's good. All right. Muscle tissue. We will cover these again, going over the muscular tissue, but we have the skeletal cardiac and smooth. So the striated versus non striated the voluntary versus the involuntary. I mean, I don't know if y'all are ninjas or know any ninjas, but it's not true. Ninjas cannot stop their heart rate. Like you cannot directly affect your heart rate. So don't let them lie to you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Dick, if you're part ninja, I, I ruined that for you. I always wanted to be a ninja. Ah, oh, shoot. Well, don't let me discourage you, you know, just, just skip that day when they talk about slowing or stopping the heart rate. But yeah, y'all can see the difference in the, the tissue here. All right. Like I said, we will definitely cover the cellular or muscular system again. And to wrap it up, your last slide, the nervous system. So we have a lot of different types of nerve tissue. We have from the impulse carrying um, dendrite cell body axon, which is the components of the nerve, to 
structural support for the nerve. So nerve conducting cells, glial is kind of like glue. So I have like astrocytes, oligodendrocytes. Those are all just different types of supporting nerve cells that we have in certain areas of the body. And we know communication, integration, and control is the function of the nervous system. That's it. We did it.